Hi everyone and welcome back to episode 3 in our advanced dialogue tutorial series. This series is covering all advanced dialogue uh, options such as asking questions and responding to various player responses when talking to NPCs. In the last episode we managed to get the player to walk up to an NPC, push E to interact and display the dialogue box. Okay. However I can still run around so we've got to fix that in this episode and then we're now going to also make it display lines of text as well. So that's our aim for this episode. So the first task is to make the player unable to move whilst dialog is open. So to freeze the player in the spot, we need to open up the start dialog task that we made in the last episode. So this is what is happening when we first interact with the player and tell it to start the dialog. Now in here you'll find the get player controller where we used it to show the mouse cursor. From that same node we want to grab uh, a node called disable input now plug that in and you want to make sure the player controller is going to the player controller disconnected from target and the target is the actor that you want to disable the input of in this case it's the get player character and that should now freeze the player in this on the spot and I'm unable to move whilst my dialog is open so that's the very first thing. The next thing we're going to do is make it so we can display lines of dialog. So open up your dialog tree and dialog the way it works is we are going to start a dialog and then we are immediately going to start a sequence. And you want a sequence because it's going to be like a conversation. We have different lines of dialog coming off it. One there, one there, one there and one there so forth. Okay, there'll be various lines of dialog that you can push a key to go to the next dialog. So in here we're going to create a new task, uh, BT, B, BT task blueprint base, and I'm immediately going to rename this one, and we're going to go display line, open this up. So this task requires two variables, the first variable is the text you want it to display, and so I'll call it text, and the variable type is going to be of text and you want it to be editable. We need another variable, and this one's going to be the dialog widget. And this is going to be a variable type of the blackboard key selector. Because in our start dialog, we set a blackboard value as an object, which was the dialog box being displayed. So in this display line, we need a dialog widget, blackboard key, make it editable again so the eyeball is showing, and that's all we need for this. So we're going to right click and go execute AI, event receive execute AI, and when we start up, we want to just say dialog widget, show that text, okay? So drag your dialog widget blueprint key out, and then from there, we can get blackboard value as object. Now this is a generic object, it doesn't know what kind of object it is until we cast it. So we need to cast that to a dialog box. And that will specify it as a, as a dialog box. As dialog box, we can now set uh, the text in it, uh, in it. So set dialog text, and it's going to be our text variable we've got here. Plug that in. Now, previously when we've done tasks before on my uh, channel, we would end this with a, a, a receipt, finish execute, okay? But we don't want to do that right away. We want to only uh, end the execute when the player's entered the key. So we're going to leave this as is for now, and we're going to make it respond to a key press that the player uh, we'll push and then trigger the dialog to end or go to the next line. So we need a tick event. So receive tick because we need to constantly check whether or not the player has entered a key or not. So in here we're going to start off by getting uh, apologies we need to get the player controller first. We need to check whether the controller's pushed anything. And I go, was input key just pressed? And we're going to choose any key for this. Okay, and now go into a branch. 
Now, the reason why I've done this, any key at start, is so the ticker doesn't run through its whole shebang um, unless any key has not been pushed, okay? So it kind of optimizes it a little bit there. So if the player pushes any key, you're going to now trigger this tick off on the true branch. Um, what we need to do, though, is check whether or not it's a specific key. So we actually want to check it against our input settings. So if we go to my project settings here and look at input on the left-hand side, I have my interact and I have the E key. So rather than hard coding the E key in and doing every other variation of that, I can just get the input settings. And then from there, I can get, uh, sorry, not from there, get the player controller. No, what I'm doing, get mapped, action mapping by name, apologies. So get action mapping by name, and we'll type in the name of our input, which is interact. And this returns an array of all the various settings you've set up to work with that interact uh, key. Uh, we've only got one, which is the E key, but uh, for argument's sake, we're going to do this as if we've got loads. So we're going to go do a for each loop. And that goes into the true. And that's going to cycle through all of our mappings that it, uh, associated interact action. With each one, we're going to check whether or not that key was the one that was pushed. So we've got something similar here. We're going to drag this, copy this, and paste it over there. And we want to check the key is matching this, okay? Um, oh, sorry, break, break input action. And we want the key that is being pushed. So drag the key down to there. And we now put another branch in for our return value into our loop body. So with that done, that means the player has hit the key for interact, which will make the input move along and finish the execute. Okay, so here we're going to go and finish execute and tick the success button. Click compile and we're done here. Let's go back to our dialog tree and we'll put in our display line. And here I can type in my text I'm going to show. So I'm going to go hello and welcome to Ryan Laylee Games. Uh, make sure your dialog widget is set to the correct blackboard key and click save okay so push play and if i go up to my dialog it will display that line of dialog now if i push e again it won't skip or close or anything like that because a we haven't told it to close and b it won't ha doesn't have anything to skip to so this is a sequence Meaning that once this one's finished, the next one in its branch will also uh, um, trigger. Okay, so the next one in branch won't trigger until this one's been finished by that task. Okay, so it's got nothing next to it, therefore it's not going to finish. Therefore, it'll just go back up the route. And because it's on a, uh, it's always happening. It's going to come back down here and do this one again. Okay, it's going to keep on doing this one. So we need to give it another second line of dialogue here. So going down and push display line. Give it another line of dialog. Go. Okay. This is a second line of text. And click save. So now when I push play, my character will skip between the two. Okay. Uh, and you can keep going on. So if you want to make another dialog line, drag another one out. Display line. Hello there. And there's your third one okay and it goes on and on and on and on you can do as many lines of dialogue as you wish okay if you find yourself running out of space and you want to really space out the main thing that it matters is that these numbers happen in sequential order okay so three four five if i move this one over here like so this will now be the first line of dialogue so the first line of dialogue it will now show is that this is the second line of text which is a bit weird and funny see and it'll go through so go through the order lines based on what you've got here. Okay. Um, if you want to make it easy for yourself, you can click on these and customize uh, the node name here to display whatever you like. And it will display it here. Okay. So totally up to you how you organize yourself. 
Um, if you wanted to, you can also do another sequence after this, like so, and these could connect to that sequence instead. If you want to keep yourself organized, because it's going to go down there, then it's going to go down here, then there, and, it'll, and this will work exactly the same as what we previously had. There you go. So the next thing we're going to do in the next episode is make it so it can end the dialogue. Okay, so once we get to the end here, it will end the dialogue and close our dialogue box, returning input and controls back to the player character. And that's it. That's what we have for this episode. Big shout out and thank you to all of my patrons, but especially to Alex Ponomarev, Frank Baum and Michael Converse for supporting me so greatly on Patreon. They're supporting me at the top tier. Um, so big shout out to those three for supporting me for this month. Uh, it means the world to me. And thank you to all of my patrons and all my subscribers. If you want to leave a comment below, leave a comment below. If you've got any questions you want to ask, leave a question below. And I'll see you all guys next time. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.